Films TV præsenteres i samarbejde med Solid. Velkommen til Films TV. Den årligt tilbagevendende danske filmfestival Booster er i øjeblikket i fuld gang herhjemme. Og som så vanligt byder børne- og ungdomsfilmfestivalen på et ocean af spændende titler for både ind- og udland. Samt en række interessante arrangementer og workshops. Du kan naturligvis se det komplette program på filmfestivalens hjemmeside booster.dk, hvor du også kan bestille billetter til forestillingerne. Og på films kan du læse en artikel af Sara Julie Højlund, hvor hun fremhæver flere af de boosterfilm, der er værd at opsøge i biografen. Films TV har i ugens løb talt med folkene bag nogle af årets mest i øjefaldende boostertitler. Nærmere bestemt et par af dem, der ikke blot appellerer til barnerumperne, men også til unge og ældre tilskuere. Først talte vi med den franske instruktør Laurent Boyot, som står bag filmen Approved for Adoption, der er noget så særegnet som en animeret dokumentar. Lidt ligesom det israelske mesterværk Walls with Bashir fra 2008. Approved for Adoption fortæller den sande historie om den adopterede koreaner Jung, der forsøger at finde sig til rette hos sin belgiske adoptivfamilie. Indimellem klippes der til nutidige optagelser af virkelighedens jung i Korea, som forsøger at finde ud af, hvor han kom fra og hvem hans rigtige forældre var. Det er en både billedskøn og rørende film om en lille drengs søgen efter kærlighed, identitet og accept, og det er samtidig en film, der smukt forener animation med live-action optagelser. I'm not sure animation is the best way to capture the reality. Um, but uh, animation is a good way to illustrate uh, symbolism and sometimes symbolism is the best way to 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 tell uh, the reality reality is sometimes uh, stronger uh, than uh, fiction for from a dramaturgic point of view um, and sometimes uh, this is the the, the opposite uh, we didn't try to to respect absolutely the the reality to tell a story you can have different ways to Um, and uh, you have to choose the, the best way to, to tell the story. In the case of a proof for adoption, I think the story of Jung um, was more difficult to, to, to tell the story uh, with a documentary because uh, Jung was not very comfortable to, to speak in front of a, a camera. So the fiction and animation uh, has been a, a better way to, to tell a story. So, i like documentary for the reality, but I can use uh, another way to, to tell a story. You just wanted to be sincere, and um, I wanted to tell a story um, interesting people. But a proof of adoption is a, a true story. Uh, the Jung's family uh, exists, but uh, this movie is a, a version of the facts uh, from the point of view of Jung, and um, so it was very important to keep Uh, subjectivity in the in this movie. Mm -hmm. What is it then about this story and about this movie that makes it so universal that it can also appeal to a young audience at a movie festival in Denmark, for example? The reactions are the same in Denmark or in the other countries. Um, people say that this movie is very emotional and powerful. Uh, from my point of view, a proof of adoption um, reveals the amazing uh, ability uh, to survive, to adapt, to create and to renew itself. People often ask me, is it a fiction? Is it an animated movie? Is it a documentary? I don't know and I think it's not very important to know it. Um, I just try to make a movie uh, like a mirror, uh, reflects our own uh, history and our uh, quests. Så so, I hope I, I succeed. Once upon a time, there was a girl in the Philippines named Snow White. When she was a little girl, all Snow White wanted was to be an actress or a mother. But one day, her mother and stepfather made her eat a poisoned apple. Name? What's your name? Snow White.
En af de andre boostertitler, der virkelig springer i øjnene i år, er det hollandsk-filippinske drama Lillet Never Happened, der tager hånd om et af de tungeste og mest ubehagelige temaer, man overhovedet kan forestille sig. Børneprostitution. Vi følger den lille pige Lillet, der bliver tvunget til at sælge sin pure unge krop på gaden i Manila, alt imens en hjælpearbejder kæmper for at sikre den lille pige en normal tilværelse. Og vi mødte både dramaets instruktør, Jacob Rung, og filmens fuldkommen fenomenale 15-årige stjerne, Sandy Talak. Um, I met, uh, made a documentary, um, well, I started to make a documentary many years ago, and then I met uh, a girl, the real Lilette, and in a mental hospital, that was one, year after, or one day after she tried to commit suicide. And it was such a strong story, what she told me about how everything, what happened to her life and so on. And, And uh, this story never left my mind and when I came back after five months I couldn't find her anymore and then I decided okay I'm going to put this into a drama film and then everybody said but nobody wants to see a movie about this subject so that was really hard to 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 make the film finally but it's it's not a, a depressing type of film it's not because the girl that I met was really a sort of tough type of girl and that's why Sandy really immediately portrayed the girl the way I had in mind like uh, Yeah, that's how she was, and she is really uh, the type of energetic uh, girl uh, to, to play the role. But when you do movies, when you work with young actors and actresses, and it's so heavy subject matter, how is there a balancing act, and how true you stay to them about about the subject? About is there total honesty, or is it like a balancing act about how to? Yeah, there's a there's a sort of line. The funny thing is the, that we worked every day with a psychologist on the set as well, and uh, she said. Um, You can you can let her say all these things in the script and you can let her do a lot of things but don't explain just don't explain because she's not yet ready for it. Yeah. And so then Sandy comes to me with a script uh, direct what does this mean what does this mean and it's like uh oh now I have to come up with a story. <laughs> yeah. They're making alibis actually. Like oh my god what is this I can't understand. Oh it's like this it's like that. It's like they're making fairy tales on my mind. <laughs> so, I actually did was simple as this. I may I use my power of imagination. I think that's the power of imagination. I asked some of my friends like, "What would you realize if your mom told you that oh, you need to sell your bodies just to avoid poverty?" So they answered me wisely, and then every single day of the taping that I am not reading the script, I'm just saying to myself that, "Okay, imagine the Sandy. You're this is not a taping. This is for real." You're on the streets. You're selling your bodies just to, to have some money, just to have some, just to eat something. So I think, yeah, I just imagine things, and then, voila. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is it about a movie that's shot in the Philippines and deals with this subject, which is, of course, it's nothing like what happens in Denmark? What is it that makes it connect? You think to an audience like in in Denmark, for example? What is it that makes the story universal enough for that? You need to answer. Oh, that. I need to answer that. You're, okay, uh, <laughs> you're the, mature enough. <laughs> The I'm only 15. <laughs> yeah. No, the advantage is uh, what, because really the, the, there was a lot of audience in Denmark and we, I mean, the, the, yesterday it was almost sold out to the cinema. And um, you notice that um, probably because I'm a Western director and, and I've been many, many times in the Philippines, but from, I knew more or less like, okay, this is how the Western world thinks and this is how, and I didn't want to have make a movie like, Uh, well, sorry Angelina Jolie, but Angelina Jolie goes to the Philippines and she rescues all the kids in the Philippines. It's really wanted to do it from the point of view from the children and uh, and to to make feel also to a young audience like how is it as a young child if you don't have food, if you don't have anything and you just have to survive and your next day you're only thinking like how do I survive the next day and the next day and the next day and without making it a depressing like Oh my God! After 10 minutes, I don't want to see this movie anymore because that's that's the the balance with you're all the time. Like you want to make an entertaining movie without, but also having this kind of subject in it. Um, so it was really sort of balancing, looking for what what when you yeah what you can do and how to entertain the audience as well because it's uh, yeah I mean that's why it's so important to have a good leading actress who's who's able to pull you through the whole film. Um, Yeah, because otherwise people lose her half halfway. Yeah, I was amazed by the, the the transition that she because on the set usually when she is Sandy she is pretty pretty modest and very very uh, sh well, almost shy. No. But, uh, no, you could be shy no. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> 
var alt for denne gang på Films TV, men vi har en masse andre udsendelser i støbeskeen. Husk at Boosterfestivalen fortsætter til og med den 15. september, og at du som sagt kan se festivalens program på booster.dk. Tak for denne gang, og på gensyn. Husk at du kan finde alle vores tidligere Films TV udsendelser på Films under Films TV fanebladet, og også på videovideo.dk i iTunes og via vores gratis Video Video app.